Hello, bees bladers! Welcome back and welcome newcomers to the channel. I have a brand new petrified fish to show you guys and gals, so let's get in here and check it out. First, I want to say thank you to my subscribers, my channel members, my patrons, everybody that comments on every video. You guys are freaking awesome, and everybody that gives me a thumbs up on every video. You can even give me a thumbs down. Just do one or the other. I really appreciate all of you for your support. This has been an awesome, awesome year. I am so excited for what I have to bring you guys for 2022. And if you're watching this in 2022, you're already in the future. <laughs> all right, let's check this out. So this is the Petrified Fish PF868 Bunta. The Bunta. And these come in black G10 or this green flax micarta, if I can get it out, it's stuck on something. And they come for like $32.99 or $34.99 for the green flax. Um, and that's the price as of the posting of this video. But check this out, man, it feels like a heavy duty knife already. Here's the back side. you have a different colored, uh, looks like green G10 backspacer going on right there. Very nice, has a deep, deep, Carry, uh, it is not reversible. Deep carry, but it is definitely inset, more so. You're going to have to take your scale off if you want to take the clip off, but it's not reversible. So I don't think that's going to be an issue anyway. That's going I can already tell you that's going to be easy in and out of the pocket for sure. And check out this flax micarta. This is pretty cool. Let me give you an up close, up close and personal look here. Can you see it? Would y'all look at it? Just look at it. It's actually pretty cool. It has a nice texture to it. It's not rough, but it's not slick either. And you can see uh, we have D2 tool steel. And on this side, you can see where the 868, PF868. So let's see what this blade looks like. Oh yeah, that's right up my alley. Check it out. Nice looking sheep's foot blade. From here down, you have a full flat grind. Over here, you have a full flat well, not a full flat, but a flat grind going all the way up to here. So for this whole part right here, man, it's just going to slice. And looks like we have some thicker thicker material here. I'll go over the specs here in just a second. But, oh, and it's smooth too. Wow. Wow. That's pretty cool. You know what? I'm going to give you the specs in 60 seconds. Let me zoom in here for you and we'll do this. Are you ready? Are you set? Okay, so this weighs 4.66 ounces. The total length from tip to tip is 7.97 inches. You have a really nice sheep's foot blade with D2 tool steel. And from what I see so far, a nice satin, nice satin grind. Your total blade length 3.41 inches right from this furthest point right here. And your sharpened blade length 3.47 inches. Your blade width is 1.12 inches. Your blade stock thickness is 138 thousandths. So it's kind of kind of got some chunkiness going on. But... Behind the edge, it was 11 to 12 thousandths behind the edge. So really good geometry going on right there. And this is nice looking flax micarta. Your clothes length from tip to tip is 4.56 inches. Your handle width from here to here is 1.06 inches. Your closed width at the widest points, 1.35 inches. Your handle thickness is just over half an inch, 0.55 inches. You have a thumb hole and a flipper tab for opening. This is a liner lock and it's a Nashorn design. Let's see how it cuts a piece of paper. See what happens here. That has been indicative of the petrified fish that I'm getting. They are sharp and man, they cut, they cut. My problem is sometimes when I'm cutting paper, I had a complaint that I kept ripping the paper as I pushed too hard. But yeah, look at this. Nice and clean, very nice and sharp. So let's check out the fit and finish of this bad boy. Of course I have some fingerprints on it, but that's nice looking satin. Very nice looking. And this is different, kind of have a, I don't know if that's a particular design or if that serves a purpose or if that's just to make it look cool. And there's your petrified fish. That's pretty cool looking. Their pivots, all, pretty much all of the ones I've seen have the petrified fish logo. And there's your flat green flax micarta, micarta. And then you have a T6 is back here and a T8 over here. So nice and clean. You have a nice, you have a nice lanyard hole there. You can put a big old lanyard through there. I'm not sure why they went with the two tone green. I would have preferred to have this uh, backspacer be the same color, but it is what it is. And Nice strong pocket clip. I'll show you what it looks like going in and out of the pocket, but I can already tell you that is going to be comfortable. And I'm guessing without even holding this, that this isn't going to be an issue because it's going to be far enough back. So here's this side. No, look at that. No branding on the blade. 
at all. Nice and clean. They just, they put it down here on the flipper tab for you. That is very nice. Very, very nice. Has a nice, even looking grind. Look at that grind. Petrified Fish has been putting out some nice stuff. I'm telling you what. Yeah, this looks good. All right. It feels solid as a rock. I mean, it feels like a fixed blade. It is so solid. Absolutely. And you can see your stop, stop pin right up here. And it's in between those nice, thick, nice, thick liners. And we'll see what it looks like on the inside in here in just a minute. I'll disassemble it for you. And what's our lockup looking like? Uh, so the lockup, you can't go by up here. You have to look down inside here. And I'll show you. If you look farther down in there, you can see our lockup is more like, oh, I'd say about 30%. Yeah, I'd go with 30. So 30% lockup. It is really nice and smooth. And look at here. Look at this pass-through. That pass through is my favorite. Nice and easy to disengage. Ooh, ho, 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 yeah. It is smooth. It is smooth. Let's do some quick size comparisons. To give you an idea of thickness, here it is up against the QSP Penguin. Eh, the Penguin's a little, little less. It's thicker than the Penguin. So I'm gonna set it down here and give you guys some quick size comparisons. Are you ready? Are you set? I'm gonna give you just a few that some of you might have that'll help give you an idea of the size of this knife. There is the Spyderco Tenacious down here, and this is the Spyderco Parrot 3. And then here is, we'll put a couple Civivis up here. Here's the Civivi Brazen. So you can see it's full-size knife. I really, I'm really, i really liking the looks of that blade, that blade shape. And here is the Civivi Riffle. And of course, you can go watch videos on the Riffle and the Brazen, and this one here, the CRKT Pilar 3 or Pilar 3, however you want to say it, and the ever-popular QSP Penguin. You gotta have a penguin in your collection. So it's a little bigger than those, and I'll put two more up here. How about the Petrified Fish Beluga? Can we fit it on the screen? <laughs> it is a Beluga. So there's the Beluga, and here's another popular one. This is the Sheepdog Full-Size Non-Flipper. Do we have enough room to fit all these big boys on the screen for you? There you go. So there's those three. You can see a little bit wider. This, the big Beluga is a big boy. So it's right kind of uh, in the middle as far as the blade's going. Let's check out the deployment and the fidget factor. And before I do, now's the call to action. Make sure if you're not subscribed to subscribe because you do not want to miss what's coming up. And on Friday nights, every Friday night at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Bees Blades live at the Hive. Oh, right. You don't want to miss that. There's a giveaway every Friday. And if you want to just come and hang out and watch it, all the craziness going on, you could do that too. But join Join in. You're going to have a lot of fun. All right. Thank you for your support. And don't forget to comment in the video. Let's get into this. So I'm going to bring it out just a little bit. Here's your push button on your flipper. Nice and smooth and drop shutty action. Look at the drop. Oh, that is nice. Can we do the reverse flick? Yes. Very easily. Very easy on the reverse flick. Oh, nice. How about left-handed? Really easy. Nice, nice, nice. Easy to use left-handed. And can I reverse flick it left-handed? Yes. You can see it's easy left-handed. So you got left-hand, right-hand operation. How about a pinch open? Yes, you can just slow roll it. Just do the slow roll. So, yeah, you can fidget with this all day long. It's nice and smooth. And it's dropping shut like that just right out of the box. Yeah, I'm liking it. How about our ergos? My hand is four inches from here to here, three and a half from here to here, and from the right here to the end of my middle finger is seven and a quarter inches. Let's see how it looks. Oh, plenty of handle, nice neutral handle. It's comfortable. I told you, I knew that pocket clip wasn't gonna get me. It, that pocket clip is just outside of the hand range. No hot spots at all, perfectly comfortable. Man, look at that. There's some jimping going on right here. I could go for a little more. You know, go ahead and take it over the top. But the jimping does fall right in line with my thumb. So that's really comfortable. You could, and look at there. Utility cuts. You know I like utility cuts all day long. The grip is comfortable. Um, what about, let's see here. Now, the plunge grind goes right down to the sharpened edge. So you're going to end up getting a smile after a couple sharpenings. At least after one or two. 
So that's an issue we could use. We definitely need a sharpening tool going on there. Um, as far as choking up, eh, I wouldn't say you, you know, you can. You can go like this and then the flipper tab goes right in between your finger. If you really want to get up nice and close for whittling a stick for some marshmallows to make some s'mores or some hot dogs. Oh yeah, that's comfortable. The, the grip is very comfortable. Man, yeah, there's, there are zero hot spots. I have no complaints at all. And one of the reasons is because they have the liners and they're not inset. So I don't have that sharp G10 bothering me. This is nice and smooth. It's smooth. Oh yeah, love it. There's just a little bit of contouring right here to fit your, fit your hand in there. Yeah, good ergos. Good ergos, good deployment, good fidget factor. Man, this is nice. Let's get inside and see what it looks like. All right, let's get in here and take a look. So this is all the stuff I'm using. There are links in the description below under knife maintenance. Definitely get you a set of the Weeha bits. And these are already on my drivers. And if you need a spare driver and you only have one, look at there, you can use that. You definitely get you a set of these bad boys. But rather than go over each one at a time, there you go. You can screenshot it and check it out later. But I'm going to get in here and see what it looks like on the inside so I can show you guys. I'm putting my finger right here on this pivot. I'm guessing it's probably a D-shaped pivot, and it is coming out very nicely. Very, very nice. We're not going to take a whole lot of time, but I do want to get in here and see what it looks like. And this uh, fancy bit driver, they're like 20 bucks. So there's a link down there if you want to get one for yourself. I really recommend them for show. Definitely. All right. Take this guy off, and I put my screws up here in line, so I know I put them back in the same spot. That's just my personal preference. And I turn the light down a little bit, so it'll, maybe it'll focus a little better for you. Maybe a little less glare going on. That screw's going to come out. Can I get it? There we go. There we go. I'm excited because, depending on when you're watching this, oh, there we go. I'm excited for the live stream that is coming up. For me, the live stream is tomorrow, but every Friday night at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have a freaking blast. And I'm telling you what, we've been having some epic live streams. Epic! The last live stream we gave away total on the channel, 11 knives. That was amazing. We got some other channels up over some, some, some marks. All right. So took all the screws out, and whoo, boy, we are well lubed. Well lubed. Holy moly. Get all this extra off here. I don't need it. But that's good. That means while while it's in shipping or sitting in a package, you're not going to have to worry about it rusting. But I definitely want to get all of this off. I don't need it. Don't need it at all. There we go. Got that off of there. So I'm going to unlock it so I can wiggle this dude. Can I finagle? Can I finagle it? Let's see. Do a little bit of wiggling, and there we go. So you can see we do have a little bit of stuff we can clean off there. It's going to make it look nice, and it's also going to make it operate better. It's going to be nice and smooth. Nice and smooth. Yeah. All right, here's your pivot. And those look like steel ball bearings. We'll double check them here with the magnet here in just a second. Oh, yeah. we See, they use it. They did. They did. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely use, I can't talk, I forgot how to talk like 10 seconds ago. They use a lot thicker lube. You can see there's a little, little bit of grimage in there. We'll get all that out. I'm going to grab some alcohol and we'll get all that out and get it all cleaned up. Let's get a little bit of rubbing alcohol on my rag here. And get this nice and cleaned out. It was already drop shutty, already smooth. But man, they always improve. They always improve once you clean them up a little bit. So, yes, D-shaped pivot. Yes, yes. Got to love that D-shaped pivot. It's all about the D. <laughs> all right, so I have that cleaned up. And here's what I mean by D-shaped pivot. That keeps your pivot from spinning. I love it. Thank you, Petrified Fish. Anybody puts a D-shaped pivot in there, I am very appreciative. But it really wasn't dirty. But, you know, you can always help it out just a little bit by cleaning it up. And you can see here where the scale is going to lock onto that D-shape on the pivot. So, let's put this bad boy back in there. Very easy. I'm going to put a little luby dube. I don't think I had this in the per first picture. Here's KPL Knife Pivot Lube. Get you some of this stuff. There's a 10% discount. 
You definitely want to get you some. There's a 10% discount in the description. It's some good stuff. Make sure I got this nice and clean. There we go. Okay, so I like to use these little swabs. You don't have to. I get you, I get these at KPL also at knifepivotlube.com. <laughs> and I'm just going to put a little bit on here. See, I do that every time. I, my new bottle really lets it loose. Not like my last one. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to keep repeat. You keep repeating the same mistakes until you learn by them. So I'm going to be careful and do this. Put some around my pivot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm already excited. I always get excited about the live streams before they even happen. Of course. Now, something I didn't do yet, and I'm going to do that right now, is I'm going to clean these uh, ball bearings. Make sure they're nice and clean with the spot that I made with alcohol. Oh, yeah, nice and shiny. And we'll check and make sure, but I'm guessing these are going to be steel ball bearings because they're so shiny. Very shiny. Uh, let's check. Are they steel? Yes, they are steel ball bearings. And if you want to get a look of them up nice and close, there's your steel ball bearings. Nice and clean. So I'm going to put one of these bad boys on here just like that. And this is a nice, simple, nice, simple breakdown some people say breakdown some call it a disassembly you can call it whatever you want tomato tomato all right and i am gonna put just a just a hair just a little bit make sure you guys can see it i'm just gonna put a drop over here to drop over here make sure everything's lubed up that way if you get this knife and you're wondering whether you want to take it apart and clean it or after you go out, go out and get it all dirty and grimy You'll be like, hey, I know how to do that. You know, not everyone has done a lot of, of knife maintenance, so this can hopefully help you. Put a drop over here, drop over here. Yeah. This I have the feeling this one's going to go together nicely and center up nicely. You know, it's going to happen soon. I've had really good luck with my disassemblies. Most everybody, as far as knife-wise, the knives have cooperated. <laughs> It's going to happen. Oh, so my little my little doodad came off the end. That's right. I'll grab another one. You can actually pop them back on there, but I just grabbed another one. I just love using these things. It just makes it makes it easier for me to not use too much. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I have KPL heavy. I'm going to put a drop of that right here in the detent hole. So show you guys. That's where that's what keeps your blade shut. And you can see the edge is burnt right there, but that's not Anything indicative of what your edge is going to be like. I'm going to put a little drop in there. There's my drop. And it's a big drop, but I'm going to follow the path of the detent. Whole detent uh, path right there. It's where it goes around. It's not going to look perfect, but it's not going to matter. Not going to matter. Can I get a little bit more going? There we go. There we go. So that'll make that detent ball nice and slickery. Okay. Going back together. Oh, shake, 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 shake. You gotta be careful. You can't sing any songs on YouTube. They don't like that. They frown upon that. And here's here's your uh, stop pin. We'll put that stop pin back where it goes, right there. See, that's what stops your blade when it shuts and opens. Okay. Looking like it's winning. I'm gonna do this and turn that pivot around. Everything is clicky back in place. I'm gonna open it up. And how are we looking? Everybody clicking where they're supposed to be? Sure feels like it, feels solid. Yeah, yeah, feels solid. How are we looking here? It feels good. Feels good. I'm going to put that pivot back in there. I'm not going to tighten it all the way down. Just going to get it in there. Get it in there. All right. So I have him in there. Now I'm going to put my other screws in. I'm not going to tighten them down. Everything looks like it's good. So I'm going to tighten down the pivot. And okay. Not super, super tight, but I have it tightened down. And look at that. We are centered. How's the action? Oh my gosh, it is drop shutty. 
so we can tighten these guys up just a couple finger tight i'm not going crazy and you if you don't if you're not like me and you don't check your screws all the time definitely you use a little bit of loctite a little bit of thread locker that way you don't lose a screw you don't want to lose a screw all right so let's see oh my gosh let's go to the main screen look at that it is full shutty i mean not a hundred percent but you know i didn't even loosen up the pivot at all and the pivot let's check the pivot is rock solid so i can actually back it off just a hair just a quarter little turn it is still rock solid this is a very solid feeling knife and for the price man this is excellent. You're, they, uh, they have this price point dead on, and now it is dropping shut. Here you go. Yeah, look at that. Woo! That has better action than some of the three and $400 knives out there. It just falls shut. So do I have anything negative? The only negative thing that I can think of, I mean, the ergos are good. The action is good. It comes really sharp. It has a nice finish on it, which I've all oiled up. Um, it has multiple deployment. It has fidget factor. It drops shut. The only thing I would say is uh, give, us a, give us a little bit of a sharpening choil, and we're good. A sharpening choil and T8s. That would be about it. So, man, this is a great knife for the price. What is it, $32, $34? Bucks? Wow. Yes. That is it right there. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it helped. Let me know what you think about it. Let me know what you had for breakfast. But remember, live life in the present. Keep a Band-Aid handy. And don't cut yourself.